um, in their journey. Some of you guys might be further along than others. Some of you may be just starting. Some of you might not have started at all. Uh, Corey, I don't know if you want to spotlight me as well, actually. Um, but the first thing I want to clear up is I am by no means an expert. Uh, and I do want this to be more of a discussion today. So if you guys have any of your own ideas or things that you've found, or if I perhaps mention a swap and you know a better one, please do pop it in the chat for everyone to see. Um, it's more about sharing and learning together. So I'm not an expert. I am not plastic free completely. I'm not zero waste. Um, I'm not a vegan uh, or anything like that. So I'm still very much along my journey as it were, but hopefully some of the things I've learned can help you guys out. So we're gonna be talking mostly about simple swaps and changes you can make at home. Now, if you could see my kitchen table right now, I have got stuff, ideas, swaps, everywhere so don't let it overwhelm you I think if you're at the start of your journey it can feel like you can't make a difference it can feel like you're not going to be able to do enough don't let it overwhelm you um, even if just from today you go away and you just make one little change uh, that will make a difference if every single one of us is trying to go zero waste imperfectly then that's going to make a bigger change than none of us trying at all so the first thing I thought I would talk about is sort of when you're out and about um, it's one of the easiest ways to start and there's a few really simple things you can purchase and you can just keep in your car or in your bag uh, that can help when you're out and about. So the first things and Corey and I and I'm sure most of you probably already do this but it's just about having a refillable reusable water bottle and a refillable coffee cup. Um, these are quite easy to get, you can get them quite cheap. Uh, my bottle is a Chili's one, uh, which is a very well-known brand and they are quite expensive to buy, but there are cheaper eco-friendly alternatives out there as well. Uh, but the idea with these is if you look after them, then you should really have your reusable coffee cup for life. Uh, and there's refill schemes all across the country as well. So don't go and buy a plastic bottle of water uh, when generally you can just ask someone to fill up your refillable bottle for free. So yes, your bottle might cost a bit to begin with, uh, but if you're one of these people at the moment that's buying a bottled drink probably almost every day for something like work, then in the long run, uh, this will work out cheaper. And again, with the coffee cups, the great thing now is a lot of coffee shops, a lot of cafes are now doing incentives where you can actually get money off your drink um, if you're bringing in your own cup. So really there's no reason not to, and they don't take up much room to just pop in your bag um, or in your car when you're out and about. Um, other things that I tend to carry around in my bag, if you wanna take it one step further, uh, reusable straws. Uh, I've got a couple of options here. So I've got a little set of metal straws. We mostly use these for drinks at home. Um, and you can also buy little disposable ones. These are cheeky panda bamboo ones, similar to a paper straw uh, that will biodegrade very quickly. These ones are obviously reusable, but I'll always have a couple of straws in my bag. And whenever I order a drink somewhere, um, I'll make a point to say, most places are pretty on it with the straws now. Um, but I will always say no straw for me, thanks, and bring my own. And normally you can buy, if you buy a little set, you get a nice little bag uh, to keep your straw in uh, as well if you don't want to go disposable. Also, it's other things. So things like pocket tissues, you can buy plastic free pocket tissues now. You don't have to have the little individually wrapped plastic ones where the wrapper is never going to rot away. Um, I'm quite a big fan of Cheeky Panda. I do like their products uh, and they do do a subscription service as well. The other thing is sort of snacks and eating out and about. So I always have like my little eco-friendly reusable cool bag with me so that I can keep snacks and things uh, in there so I won't necessarily have to buy something. I tend to find when you fall down uh, on your journey and end up buying something in a single use wrapper, it's normally because you haven't prepared. So I always try and take a bit of time to not have to think, oh, I'm starving. I'm just going to have to buy this sandwich uh, and I'll have something like this with me. And another great thing to have in your cupboard is a reusable sandwich wrap. These are so cute. But literally, if you make sandwiches at home, it's uh, designed to be easy, clean in the middle and you just fold it up can't do it upright but you just fold it up it's got a little velcro tab and then you've got your little wrapped up sandwich in your cute little design so again it just saves you using things like cling film um, and foil now cling film and foil I think in Bedfordshire are recyclable but only if they're clean and I don't know about you but it's very hard to make wrap up and eat a sandwich uh, and keep the cling film and the foil clean also, as a side note, foil, a lot I didn't realise this until a while ago, needs to be recycled in a ball at least as big as a fist. Any smaller, and the machines at the recycling centre just don't pick it up, the magnets. So you need to actually collect all your clean foil until you have a ball 
about the size of your fist. But a sandwich wrap, lovely, cute little thing. And everyone in the office or when we're back at the office or at work will look at that and be like, oh my God, that is the cutest little wrapper. And then hopefully they'll go out and get one too. So I think that's a nice thing about sort of going on this journey to reduce waste and to reduce plastic um, is you get ideas from each other along the way and you inspire other people. Uh, and it does, it makes you feel good. So I know a few people now that have gone out and bought little sandwich wraps, little cool bags for their lunch um, to bring in their own. And it does make a difference. I know some of you watching probably have children. Uh, you might be making a packed lunch and sandwiches up for them every single day. So if you think about how many wrappers they're just chucking in the bin at school or bringing home in their lunch bag, by giving them a cute little wrapper like this that they keep, you're actually saving quite a lot of waste. Other things I have in my car, pretty obvious. I'm sure we're all in this habit by now, uh, but shopping bags take your own shopping bags. I know they charge now, which has hopefully put a lot of people off, but it's very easy to forget. So I tend to have the little reusable shopping bags that I can kind of clip to my handbag that fold up um, so that even if I haven't planned to go into a shop, again, it's that whole thing of not pre-planning last minute, <gasps> I haven't got a bag. If you've got one clipped to all of your different um, bags and things, then you should always have an option there. And as well as your shopping bags, you can get these cute little produce bags. These are brilliant. So this one's designed to put bread in. They're just cotton bags. They can go in the wash if they get dirty. And then you can get these more, you can't really see it on camera, but more of these mesh style ones uh, to pop things like your fruit and veg in. So in my talk this morning, we were talking about how, yeah, it can feel overwhelming and like you can't make much of a change, but as well as what you do yourself as an individual, and as well as what you encourage others to do and tell them to do, it's also a lot about our consumer behaviour. Um, I don't know if anyone listened to Corey's brilliant lunchtime show on Bedford Radio today, um, where he did a little interview with me, but we were talking about how our consumer behaviour is going to have an effect. So, for example, we do need change to happen higher up. We need things like leaders and governments and these big corporate companies um, to make changes. But one of the best ways we can encourage them to do that is through what we're talking about and what we're buying. So like I said on the radio, if we start buying all the loose veg from the shop, even if we're not particularly going to a specific uh, plastic free shop, if we're picking the loose items instead of the wrapped items, um, all of these companies will start to think, actually, this is what people want. This is what sells um, better. So that's more sort of for out and about things to maybe have in your car, in your cupboard, in your bag. But there's so many other things you can change. Um, I even take things like little cutleries in my bag, even if it's just normal cutlery, just so again, if you're picking up something somewhere, you've already got them ready to go. Um, consumer behaviour, again, just going back to shopping, I'm looking around my table for inspiration. I'm, I'm not very organised, I'm erratic. I've, I just ended up with so many more things to tell you about than I realised. So I'm just going to look at the table for inspiration. Um, you can get some brilliant zero waste shops now. And actually in Bedfordshire, we're quite lucky. We've got a few. Um, I don't know if anyone has been to places like the Green Pantry. Uh, you've got the store in Bedford. You've got Bamboo Turtle. Um, seasons fruit and veg they do plastic free fruit and veg deliveries and there's a few other places similar uh, my favorite is one called refills uh, and he kindly promoted our talks as well which is very nice because he's always there for a nice doorstep chat when he drops our stuff but these shops sell loads of things that you can just get without the plastic so things like dried herbs and spices uh, store covered ingredients like pasta rice um, things like porridge oats, they can deliver all of that to you plastic free and then you can just refill your own tub. So I use refills, but we are quite lucky for those of you that are in Bedfordshire, there's a lot of options around. And you might just have to do a little bit of a search to find those plastic free or refill shops that are in your area. So for example, once refill, which by the way is spelt like the name Phil, so the guy that runs it is called Phil, P-H-I-L, so very clever marketing there. But I literally just fill up my own tubs at home. I buy cute ones because why not? You may as well make your cupboards pretty uh, on your journey. But if all else fails, if you do look around in the shop, you can quite often find some plastic free options. I dug a couple out of my cupboard. Um, so for example, we usually shop at Asda and you can get things like rice in a completely cardboard package. There's no plastic insert in there. So it's just about having a good look around. And again, if I'm always buying this rice and if everyone else is and we're avoiding the plastic wrapped ones, it will make a difference. Um, now, like me, I'm not expecting anyone to be plastic free, zero waste tomorrow. It takes a long time, a lot of effort. 
you do need to think about things like money and your budget for it as well. Um, but there are options out there for when you do and inevitably end up with wrappers. Uh, hopefully, most of you watching have heard of TerraCycling um, before. So it's basically an additional recycling scheme to your curbside recycling. I know not everyone watching today is in Bedfordshire, uh, but we're quite lucky. We're under central Bedfordshire for me personally, uh, and they have a brilliant recycling scheme. They can recycle quite a lot of stuff. A lot of places can't. Um, things like even yogurt pots, plastic trays, uh, things like that. Not everywhere does that, but TerraCycling is a way to just recycle additional things that you can't put in your curbside recycling. Um, and exactly all you have to do is go on the TerraCycle website, search by your location, and it will tell you what drop off points are nearby. And then you can look into those and find out what you can recycle. Um, so, for example, the one that I use, which is I either use the one in Clophill or there's one in Westerning near me in Bedfordshire, but they'll collect things like your empty bread bags, crisp packets, uh, chocolate and cr uh, chocolate wrappers. What else have we got? Any sort of confectionery wrappers, even down to things like makeup. Um, and all sorts really, even toothbrush heads now. So TerraCycling, lots of things, contact lenses. I try and TerraCycle as much as possible. I have to wear contact lenses sometimes, especially at the minute with wearing a mask and my specs. And literally I just take all my contact lenses into my local opticians that has a drop off point and I pop them all in there. And boots as well now, I'm sure we all have a boots near us. They're now bringing in a TerraCycle scheme as well for all of your empty sort of tubes of cream, makeup products so that more and more things can be recycled. Pharmacies as well, finally are now starting to deal with medication wrappers. Uh, again, something I didn't know until recently, but medication wrappers are incredibly hard to recycle. It's all to do with how they actually fix the foil to the plastic tray, but it's virtually impossible to separate. I used to put them in the recycling. I just thought they'd be recycled, uh, but they're not. But thankfully now, pharmacies are starting to bring in a TerraCycle scheme that you can take all your empty medication packets to. So that's worth keeping an eye on, following. Keep asking locally as well, talk about it. Go into your local pharmacy. Have you got a TerraCycle scheme yet? If not, could you look into it? Because actually, if lots of us end up going in and asking these questions, again, through our consumer behaviour, they're going to kind of be like, all right, we're going to have to do this. So, and that's something you can do without spending any money at all. Other swaps we can make. I have got about a million. Maybe we should move into the bathroom next. Let's go <laughs> room by room. Some of you will have probably heard of these things before or might have already used them. Uh, but one of the very first things I swapped, as you'd know from the radio show, if you listened to that earlier, um, was actually sanitary products. So sorry for all the boys listening, but it's something that us women have to live with all the time and sanitary products are really really wasteful they're all packed full of plastic they're all going to end up in landfill they're single use disposable and it was the first change i made um, if you're a tampon user you can get things like the moon cup uh, and if you're a pad user you can get very cute again all of these things are really cute reusable pads uh, nice little designs you just pop them in the wash dead easy um, and that was the first change I made. And honestly, the amount of single use plastic I must have saved through that is amazing. Next change I made in the bathroom was toilet roll. So I use Who Gives a Crap? But again, there's some other ones out there. Your journey to zero waste is going to be different. It can, after a while, become a little bit of an ethical dilemma. Um, so, for example, a lot of eco-friendly products are made with bamboo. So you do have to think about the sort of carbon footprint of bamboo. If it's had to travel from across the world, you might want to find something more locally sourced. Um, but start small. Don't let it overwhelm you. And if you need to change something later on to a different brand, uh, then do it. Um, but these are cute. They come in their own individual wrappers. That might be a reason for some of you to not want them because you see that as wasteful. But for me, they look nice in the bathroom. People comment on it when they come in and then they might end up buying it if they've been to the loo uh, at my house. Not that anyone's coming in the house at the minute, but that was another change. And another thing I think with going more zero waste is about compromise. Some of you might live alone, in which case it's easy. You can make your own decisions. You can decide what you want to do. Uh, but for those of you that are in households, you do need to find things that everyone in your household can get on board with and use. So another change I made quite early on, if I can find them, was toothpaste tablets. Not showing up very well on camera there. Um, I bought these from Peace with the Wild, which is Peace 
with the world which is a brilliant um eco-friendly website but there's lots that sell all sorts of different products um and these ones are just little toothpaste tablets they've still got the fluoride in uh, you can also get ones without fluoride because again you've got to decide if you agree uh, with the use of fluoride or not uh, and you just chew them basically and then brush your teeth but my husband cannot stand these uh, he hates chewing on these little chalky tablets and it wasn't really working for us so a compromise that i made um, was buying this colgate smile for good toothpaste and the plastic that the tube is made of um, is a different type of plastic if you look on the back of plastic wrappers you'll see there's different numbers on there um, and some numbers are recyclable some aren't and some are easier to recycle than others so although it just looks like a, a bog standard plastic tube of toothpaste this can actually go in your recycling afterwards and it will be recycled. Again, not for everyone. It's still coming in plastic. It's coming from a big brand, but as a compromise for our household, because otherwise he'd just be buying his own tube of toothpaste anyway, hiding it in the cupboard from me whilst I chew on my toothpaste tablets. This works well for me. So you've just got to think about what works for you. And yes, there's always going to be someone that's doing it better than you or doing more than you. Um, but don't get too caught up in that. Just do what you can um, as a household. Other easy swaps to go with your toothpaste. Get yourself a little bamboo toothbrush. Um, these are great. They last quite a long time. The only problem at the minute, which again, I didn't realise straight away, it's still very hard to get biodegradable bristles. So although you can compost the handle of your toothbrush, your bristles are still going in the bin. So again, you might have to weigh up how worth it you think this swap uh, would be, because obviously it's not cheap to buy yourself a bamboo toothbrush. Um, you can get ones with bamboo bristles, but they're made out of pig hair. <laughs> now, obviously for some people, they're just gonna find that gross full stop, even though they're perfectly safe, they're clean, uh, and ready to go. Um, and also, of course, a lot of people on this journey to zero waste are vegetarian or vegan, and therefore they wouldn't want to use uh, pig bristles or hair, as it were. Um, if this isn't for you, again, a compromise we have at our house is you can TerraCycle your toothbrush heads, for your electric toothbrush. So my husband's a big fan of tooth care. He didn't want to let his electric toothbrush go. So the compromise in our house is TerraCycling the heads and using the Smile for Good toothpaste instead um, of the tablets um, and also you can get other brands there's one called I think it's called Coco Live and they come in plastic free packaging and you just send the toothbrush heads back to them once you've got a few and they'll recycle them a lot of these companies now have like a closed recycling system if you like so the idea is you send your empties or your used products back they'll recycle them and put them back into the system shower Hopefully we all have a bath or a shower. I would like to think so. Um, but you can get loads of different things like shampoo bars now. This is just one I've got in the cupboard. I don't actually use this one. Uh, my favourite one is from Lush and it's called Honey, I Washed My Hair. Um, but there's all sorts of different shampoo bars available now. It is a hard swap to make. You might have noticed I've got a lot of hair. Uh, it's very long. It's very thick. And I struggled with changing to eco-friendly toothpaste, eco-friendly toothpaste, eco-friendly shampoo. A lot of people will find that their hair goes quite greasy or it almost has like a waxy or a dry frizzy feel to it. Um, but you've got to stick with it. The problem is we don't realise how many chemicals are in these items that we use all the time. And literally our hair and skin is used to it. So actually changing to these sorts of eco-friendly chemical sulfate free things like shampoos um, can take a little bit of a transition period. So stick with it. But the problem is a shampoo bar isn't always cheap. So if you've spent, I don't know, nine, ten pound on a shampoo bar instead of a quid in a, on a plastic bottle and then your hair hates it, uh, it can be a little bit demoralising. So all I would say is talk to other people, get on a lot of zero waste plastic free groups like Plastic Free Bedford and see what other people like and see what their hair type is. Um, but stick with it. I now only use shampoo bars and conditioners uh, and they work for me. You can get liquids as well and then you can send the bottles back to refill. I am a huge fan of Beauty Kitchen. I don't know if anyone else uses them, um, but I use a lot of their skincare products, things like moisturizers, primers, um, 
I've tried the shampoo. Their hand sanitizer is also brilliant. And the idea is, again, that you send all your empty bottles back to them. The labels are designed to come off and biodegrade. They'll sanitize the bottles, refill them, relabel them and back on the shelf they go. Um, they sell it in Holland and Barrett as well. So if you don't want to have to post your empties back, you can actually just drop them into your local Holland and Barrett and then you get more points on your card, which is nice. Uh, this is the hand sanitizer. And I feel like actually with the current world we're listening in or living in rather with COVID and everything else, uh, this is a great little find. You can see it comes in an aluminium bottle uh, instead of plastic. So plastic can obviously be recycled. So I think sometimes we say to ourselves, oh, I, I know it's a plastic bottle, but it will go in recycling. But plastic can only be recycled so many times. Um, and then I don't know the ins and outs. I'm not an expert, but it doesn't work the same way anymore. Whereas aluminium is something that can literally be recycled over and over forever, as far as I know. Um, so it comes in these big bottles and then you then decant it into a handy little tiny pump bottle. So again, that's something else I always have in my handbag at the moment, a little aluminium spray bottle of this fantastic sanitizer. And of course it's alcohol based, so it is effective against coronavirus. Um, other changes, another big one, soap. Let's stick with the coronavirus theme. Um, I used to always buy those little pump bottles of soap that you just pick up on the shelf in the shop and I'd buy whichever one was on offer for a quid or less and pop that pump in the bathroom, the kitchen. And then when it ran out, I'd rinse it out, put it in recycling, felt like, yay, there's no waste. It's gone in recycling. It's fine. Uh, and I'd buy another one. And when I think about it, I must have bought a hell of a lot of these disposable soap bottles in my lifetime. Um, but we don't need to. I actually kept the same bottles at the start of my journey um, for the first two years. And I just refilled them from a big five litre thing of eco-friendly soap. Um, I used Bio D to buy my five litre soaps. Um, and honestly, those pump bottles that were designed to just be single use lasted me the full two years absolutely fine no problem um i have recently just tried this one um which is from something called the bauer collective and they come in these little refillable pouches and, and there's a lot of brilliant companies now doing similar things now again this is plastics so you've got to decide if you'd rather just have something like a cardboard packaged bar of soap um but the idea is you send all these pouches back to them they come with a little envelope you collect four empty pouches you refill your own pump bottle. Um, oh, there you go. Let's show you it the right way around might help, mightn't it? Um, oh, that's actually body wash, but they do all different ones. They're easily confused. Soap, uh, laundry detergent, all sorts. So lots of things you can change and they might not be plastic free, but as long as you do actually send these back, they're pretty much zero waste. They're getting used again. Um, wet wipes, another huge problem. Uh, I'm sure you all heard about the huge fatberg uh, in London in all the tunnels and the sewer systems that was caused by us putting things like wet wipes down the toilet and flushing fat down the drain and things. Uh, but there's alternatives for those too. Um, again, if anyone has got little ones, little babies, there's a brilliant company called Cheeky Wipes. There you go. And these are like little reusable wet wipes almost. So you just keep them in a tub, you make up a solution. They're basically a flannel. So you could literally just make your own or get some cheap flannels, but you know, this is the fancy version. Again, not cheap. If you don't want to spend out on cheeky wipes, just make your own flannels from some old towels or something along those lines. But you soak them in solution and you just use them as a wet wipe. Uh, you can use them to take things like makeup off um, as well. Although for that, ladies, I have a specific product uh, for taking your makeup off, a favourite of mine. I am obsessed with Face Halo. Again, it's another change I made quite early on. I used to buy those packets of single use makeup wipes that come in the plastic wrapper. Um, of course, things like Hughes uh, War on Plastic program then uncovered that a lot of these baby wipes were actually full of plastic fibres as well. So not only were your baby wipes and your makeup wipes single use, it turned out something that you would think would biodegrade was actually full of plastic really worrying um but these face halos are fab and would you believe that this little pad here can take all my makeup off with just some warm water amazing uh, and then you just stick them in the wash so they do say a certain number of uses before they need replacing i can't remember it's something like over 100 washes um but i've got to say i've had mine for 
I bought more over the years because I love them so much, but I've had mine for at least a year or two and they're still perfectly fine to use. I also have a giant body version of the face halo and I actually use that in the shower as a shower puff. Um, really nice and it's got a more scrubby exfoliating side and a softer side, but these little makeup ones are brilliant. Um, and again, I was like, why did I buy the single use ones? You can buy alternatives, Cheeky Panda, for example. This is their baby wipes. Uh, they also do a makeup wipe version. Uh, and again, although they might not look any different to any baby wipe you could go and buy in a shop, um, the idea is again, that the plastic, this is made out of the number plastic, uh, is actually fully recyclable, unlike a lot of similar wrappers. And of course the wipes themselves uh, will completely biodegrade. There's no microplastics hiding in there at all. Right, am I overwhelming you yet or are we okay? Because I, I can keep going all day. <laughs> I can see some people in the chat, so hopefully we've got some ideas as well and we'll do the Q&A at the end. But I'm gonna keep going. As I said, don't let this overwhelm you. This is literally just to get some ideas. Some of you will listen to some of these suggestions and you'll be like, I'm not doing that. Or you might Google it, look at the price and be like, mm, no. <laughs> but hopefully you'll all find something uh, that works for you. So the next one I was going to talk about is deodorant. Um, again, when you get those sort of aerosol cans, in theory, they can go in recycling, um, mostly aluminium, which again is uh, recyclable infinitely. But you can get eco-friendly alternatives that haven't got any harsh chemicals in for you or for the environment. And you can also get plastic free ones. Um, one that I've tried before is Ben and Anna, which is like a little deodorant stick. But what I found with the deodorants is like a lot of these eco-friendly swaps, they were just so expensive. And again, I get hot and sweaty. I'm, I'm oversharing today. We've talked about periods. Now we'll talk about how hot and sweaty I get. Uh, I'm boiling now from the stress of talking to you lot about all these swaps. But literally you have to find a deodorant that works for you. And if you've spent 10 pound, 15 pound on a deodorant stick, and then you feel like a right sweaty Betty, <laughs> or you feel like you smell, you're not gonna be very happy with the swap. Um, so I tried a few deodorants. You can also get salt blocks and things. Some people swear by them. You just wet this Himalayan salt block, rub it on your pits and you don't sweat. Uh, but for me, it wasn't as effective as I wanted. And I do like something with a fragrance. Uh, and interestingly, I now actually make my own deodorant. So perhaps for the more creative amongst you, the crafty ones uh, that like to do things completely for themselves, you might want to look into uh, environmentally friendly products that you can actually make yourself at home. Um, you can make everything from moisturizers and hand creams uh, to deodorant and shampoo bars. So deodorant is the only thing I've tried making so far, and it's actually a swap that I've kept. So even though I bought a Himalayan salt block, I bought a Ben and Anna deodorant stick. I tried a couple of others. Um, I now actually prefer my own homemade deodorant. Don't ask me the recipe off the top of my head, but if you have a search online, you'll find some really easy recipes to make at home. Uh, and I can always get that to post on the Plastic Free Bedford page later on. But all I did was I went on a brilliant website called Akala. And Akala will give you recipes anyway, but they sell some brilliant products that you can use to make your own stuff as well as their own products. And off the top of my head, literally it's just um, organic unrefined shea butter, which expensive to buy, but honestly, I bought the hugest block of organic shea butter, all wax wrapped. I just keep it in the cupboard and I'll just get it out and melt it as I need it. Uh, and then that gets mixed with some coconut oil, again, in a plastic free tub little glass jar, little aluminium lid. And again, it's gonna last forever. So I've been making my own deodorant now, must be for about a year. And I still haven't run out of the stuff I originally purchased to make it. So as far as I remember, it's equal parts coconut oil and the shea butter. You warm and melt it together. It then has some arrowroot powder in it, which acts as like a bit of a thickener. You've probably heard of it before. You can use arrowroot powder in baking. Haven't managed to buy that plastic free yet, but I have bought it in a recyclable pouch. You put some bicarbonate of soda in it and that, I think that helps stop the sweating. And then you add your own essential oils. So you get that nice fragrance as well. And because of the shea butter, it's really moisturizing. It's nice on your skin. So out of all the expensive eco-friendly deodorants I bought, making my own was actually my favorite. Uh, and what I did where I used to use the plastic roll on sticks, I actually have two 
empty plastic roll-ons and I just pour my melted mix into the roll-ons and put it in the fridge to set uh, and that's my deodorant sticks so if anyone wants to try that I really recommend it uh, you can even make your own face masks and things I went to a brilliant zoom workshop I think it was last month uh, which was run by Beauty Kitchen and they actually taught us how to make four different face masks um, for different purposes or skin types and they were so easy you can even keep them in the freezer um, and a lot of us like a bit of a pamper hopefully even the blokes as well who doesn't like a pamper and these face masks you know much better than buying a single use sheet mask that you put in the bin that comes in a horrible plasticky uh, wrapper. So just some ideas as well that you might want to look up recipes, get creative and have a go at making your own eco-friendly things. I'm rallying along quite nicely now. I feel like we've got through a lot of what's on my table, which is great. And hopefully we've got some questions coming in as well. Um, laundry, dishwashers, that's other areas that you might want to think of making changes. Um, it can be as simple as just picking up the what do you call it, like the manufacturer instruction book for your appliances and actually work out what is the most eco-friendly setting on your appliances. So if you have things like a dishwasher, a washing machine, a tumble dryer, just find the most eco-friendly setting for those. That will make a difference. Might even save you some money on your electricity bill um, as well. And also you can just turn the temperature down on your wash. Um, you know, so many people wash their clothes on 60 degrees centigrade but most of the time you don't need to. You can turn it down to 40 degrees, perhaps even 30 degrees, and your clothes will come out fine. Um, a lot of clothes do contain microplastics. So again, we've got some brilliant talks on later this week, which I suggest you go to. There is one on fast fashion and how you can help with that, all about sort of repurposing your clothes. So I'm gonna be definitely going to that one. Um, but you can get things that will actually catch the microplastic in your clothes, that just go in the machine uh, and you can just change to a more eco-friendly product. So I haven't actually tried this yet. I literally had this delivered uh, last week, but this is some splosh laundry powder. I've also bought the liquid one because again, I've tried eco-friendly ones before and I just didn't find my clothes smelt that nice. They didn't smell that fresh. So this is a new one I'm trying, um, but the liquid one, I really, really like, and it comes with a really clever dosing bottle, which is designed again to refill from pouches similar to these. So Splosh are another one, a bit like the Bauer Collective that will provide you with the sachets. You'll fill up your existing one. This is a powder, obviously, in a lovely plastic free tin, but you can get ones that come with reusable bottles as well. Kitchen cleaners, that's another great one. I am a huge fan of a company called Iron and Velvet. And Iron and Velvet will basically send you this tiny little box in the post. So again, minimum packaging, pops through the post box, the letter box if you're out, and they're like a little tiny sachet. And all you do is put that sachet in your reusable spray bottle, mix in the correct amount of water, give it a shake, uh, and there you have it. You've got your antibacterial kitchen spray, bathroom spray, window cleaner, whatever it might be. Uh, and there's other ones like Ocean Saver that do similar little pouches. Or again, you can order ones like this, not body wash obviously, but cleaner, and you dilute it yourself at home. Again, if you wanna make your own, you can make your own things like toilet cleaners um, using things like citric acid. You'll find lots of recipes for that online. Um, and you can make even things like little toilet bombs uh, that are like little cakes that you drop in to clean your toilet. So again, you don't have to use all these harsh chemicals. We're in a hard water area for those of you that are in uh, Bedfordshire or Amphitic like me. So you might find some of these things work better for you than others. But if you're in a softer water area and you can clean things like your toilet without chemicals, then that might be a change that's great for you. So I think we've got through a lot of stuff. Things like sponges is another great one. This is a konjac sponge, um, really good for exfoliating and cleaning your face and things like that. They are quite expensive, but again, this will completely biodegrade. Konjac sponge is completely um, natural. And you can also get the similar things for washing up. So we've got these lovely uh, natural sponges and you can just pop these in the compost and they'll be gone in a few months, which is absolutely uh, amazing and exactly what we want. You can buy things like loofahs and stuff as well. Um, and then I've even got like things like makeup bags and things. This is my toiletry bag. 
this is a toiletry bag that's actually made out of old saris, would you believe? So old Indian saris. And of course, the material is absolutely beautiful. And it's a company that repurpose old saris that are perhaps damaged or too old to be worn anymore. And they make them into these lovely repurposed makeup bags. So honestly, there's so many lovely products out there and they can make brilliant gifts as well. So if you know you yourself are, are wanting a gift and you don't know what to ask for, just say, actually, you know what? I might not spend this money myself on this, that and the other, but I'd quite like to receive these as a gift. Or maybe you could make up a little eco-friendly hamper for a friend that you know is trying to go a little bit more zero waste. But there are some lovely products like that you can buy. I've got like this little Hessian one here that's made out of old sacks. And I just use it if I'm traveling uh, as a little toiletry bag. You can grow your own loofers uh, actually as well. My, my mum and sister tried last year. I don't think it was too successful. It might be one of those where you need a greenhouse, um, but they're related to the cucumber, I think. Again, I'm not an expert, so don't, don't shoot me if I'm wrong. Um, but yeah, you can grow them and then you dry them out and you can just make your own sort of scourers or body sponge or, or whatever else. So very, very clever. I think I have covered everything on my table. The only one I haven't mentioned, but luckily I think the law is changing anyway. Um, but of course you can buy little cotton buds that don't have that horrible plastic stick when you see these horrible photos of a seahorse floating around the ocean, uh, clinging onto a plastic cotton bud. Um, you can get ones like bamboo and paper ones. I prefer bamboo uh, because it's a little bit stronger for things like makeup. You're not meant to use them in your ears, but who doesn't? <laughs> but you can get the eco-friendly alternatives. And I've tried a few. They're all much of a muchness. This one's some plastic phobia and this one's some eco-living. So the brands really are out there now. If you had a notepad on you, you've probably taken pages and pages of notes by now. But honestly, there are so many um, little businesses out there that are really, really trying to make going uh, more plastic free and more zero waste and eco-friendly a lot easier for us. It's just about finding what works for you and your budget, what works for your family and the people in your household, uh, and what just works out for you practically and as an individual. So like I said before, with things like hair and deodorant, you might have to experiment um, a little bit. But don't let what I've talked about today overwhelm you. I know we've covered a lot and I've been talking for quite a while now, actually. There you go, Corey. I'm closer to the hour that I didn't uh, hit this morning with my wildlife talk. But don't let it overwhelm you. Maybe if there was just one or two things that stuck out in your mind, they're probably the ones you want to think about starting with, because obviously they've stuck in your mind because you've had more of a thought process that that could work for you and that you could change it. So hopefully I've given you some ideas. Hopefully as well, some of these things you already knew or were doing, but for anyone that's earlier on in your journey, all I can say is don't panic. Just do what you can, when you can. Sometimes the initial outlay might be slightly more, like when I bought my first full pack of reusable sanitary products. Yeah, it was quite expensive than just going out and buying a pack for a pound again. But in the long run, it saved me money. I haven't bought a sanitary product in over two years. Um, and of course, all of the products that haven't gone to landfill even if I just kept at that one small change, you can't say that that hasn't made a difference uh, to the planet. So I think that's about it for me. I think I have gone through everything I wanted to show you today. I'm sure you guys have probably got lots more ideas than me, probably even some that I haven't even thought of yet. So I'm going to hand back to Corey so we can do a little bit of a Q&A and I will try my very best to answer them. Although remember, I am not an expert. Brilliant, thank you. Um, so we have had a few questions in there and a few little comments that I wanted to highlight. Um, so let's have a look. So Phil has said he has changed to shampoo bar. Admittedly, he only has short hair, but he loves it and he won't be going back to liquid shampoo. Yeah, that's the thing as well. Like it, it's easier for the blokes, I think, because their hair tends to be a bit less fussy. But yeah, just buy one and give it a go. And, and if you don't like it, you can always pass it on to someone you know that doesn't mind your shampoo, shampoo bar. I've seen a lot of people doing that. If they've found a product they haven't got on with, they've just passed it on to someone that, that doesn't mind it's been opened and used. So yeah, that's great to hear. Um, this is from Sophie. She says, National Trust grow loofers and sell them. Oh, that's good to know. I'll have to have a look at that. I mean, literally my first loofah, I actually bought it in Wilco 
Um, and it wasn't very expensive. Now, the problem is in shops, they still use, don't they, those awful little tags to put the price label on, um, which is obviously plastic that can't recycle, but a very small amount. But yeah, it's great to know you can get it from somewhere like there as well. I'm going to check that out. Debbie has put a question. She asks, when you use a microfiber filter, where do you dispose of the fibres? Great question. And you know what? I don't know the answer. And the answer might be that literally it does go to landfill, but I suppose it's more controlled because you can put it in your general waste bag instead of it literally getting separated and washed out. So I think with those microfiber filters, without looking it up, so don't quote me on it, but the idea is probably just that it's actually collecting them together um, and preventing them from just being washed out to see where they'll obviously be completely dispersed uh, and impossible to get rid of. So I'm presuming they probably still go to landfill and might not rot away, but the point is they haven't got into the water system. This is also from Debbie. She says, do you have a list of eco firms? Great. Do you know what? I actually don't. But just before we started the talk, I spoke to Corey and I said, what I have to do um, is compile um, either a few PowerPoint slides or a little document um, with some ideas and swaps. So this talk's being recorded. So obviously, again, you can watch this on YouTube if you haven't had a chance to write them all down. But at some point, I think because I'm going to be involved in more events with Plastic Free Bedford, um, I will definitely get a list written down. But I don't have one yet. But if anyone wants to email me, uh, and I can start compiling a list, then I'm more than happy to send that out once I've done it. Um, so Isabel, um, she asks, what are some of the worst swaps you have tried to make? That's a good question. And again, I don't want to put anyone off trying a swap because everyone's an individual. But for me, the toothpaste tablets did take a while to get used to. Um, you're so used to a toothpaste that foams up in your mouth because of all the sulfates and things that you really feel like it's that foam that's giving you that clean feeling and cleaning your teeth. And when you swap to an eco one, and the same with shampoo actually, they often don't foam the same way. So I'd say they take the longest to get used to because you almost don't feel like it's cleaning because it's not foaming up in your mouth or, or on your hair or on your body. And what you've got to remember is a lot of the time it's these sulfates, which are chemicals we don't actually need and aren't always that great for things like our scalp that make them foam up. Um, and like I said, with the shampoo bars as well, that took me a long time to find one that worked for me. Um, and again, Lush, I do love Lush products. But as you can see behind me, my job is, is I work with wildlife. I have a background in zookeeping um, and Lush are very anti-captivity, even if it's done well. Um, in a well-managed professional facility where welfare is really high. So for me, I probably wouldn't usually shop at Lush, but my compromise was I like the product. So yeah, they were probably the trickiest ones. I'm like looking on the table for inspiration. Um, even the makeup wipes, the face halos, took me a while to get used to because they're obviously much thicker than just using a disposable wipe. Um, but give them a go, stick at it. And I don't want to put anyone off trying anything. Um... Jill asks, any tips for baby nappies? Oh, yeah. So you can, this is when you can tell I don't have children because I haven't covered all of these amazing swaps you can make. Um, but a little bit like um, the reusable sanitary pads, you can get reusable nappies. And I think initially a lot of people are like, that's disgusting. Um, but actually, it's not at all. You know, what did people use before plastic nappies came along? We used reusable cloths and, and nappies and things. And a lot of councils actually run schemes as well. Um, and they'll actually provide you with nappies because they don't want all these disposable um, nappies going into landfill either. So there are a lot of companies that make beautiful little reusable nappies. You just put them in the wash. So easy. Uh, dry them on the line. And again, things like the baby wipes, things like cheeky wipes are quite expensive, but you could make your own flannels, just soak them in a solution and you'd use them exactly the same way, but you'd just pop them in the wash uh, instead of popping them in the bin and you can use them over and over and over. I can already see because I've opened the chat now, we've got some suggestions for reusable nappies in the chat. A really good website if you've got children, it was one that was recommended to me quite early on, but they do lots of other stuff as well, is called Babby Pure. Uh, which is spelled B-A-B-I-P-U-R. Uh, and they sell all sorts of things from nappies and children's clothing that's sort of sustainable and microplastic free. They sell even beautiful little wooden toys 
um, for children to save all those toys that they play with for a few months of life and, or, and then break and, and go in landfill or you don't need anymore. So that's a good website to check out if you're wanting sort of more inspiration for more eco-friendly child raising, uh, as it were. <laughs> it's probably not the right term. Um, Alban asks, can you say what the plastic numbers are or offer a reference? What the plastic what? Numbers. I'm not sure. Um, what I'm not sure. As in sort of how much goes to landfill is quite a lot. I, I have written a few articles that I've managed to find some brilliant figures for. Things like how many plastic water bottles and things get chucked away. Um, but off the top of my head, uh, I couldn't tell you. I think I shared no, an article, numbers, it might have been the, the Plastic Free Bedford last time, it might have had some interesting figures in, but if you have a Google, you'll find some stuff. No, I'm, I'm, the numbers I'm, on the packages. I'm, I'm in... Oh, um, sorry, I'm with you now. As in the little, um, yeah. Yes. So again, if you Google it, you'll find handy little Google images um, that will describe each one. I keep meaning to print it, actually, to sort of stick it on the wall and, or to, again, put put in my bag as like just a little printout in my wallet or something to remind me. Um, but for example, let's see if I can look on a few of these. So yeah, I think number seven is a good one. So you're just looking for this little number here. Very hard with my mirrored screen. Mm -hmm. There you are. So see how this one's got the little plastic recycling symbol and then it will have a number in the middle. So it's this number you're looking out for uh, because some numbers are more recyclable than others. So seven is a good one to look out for. That's why, for example, this baby white wrapper could go in the bin, but another similar one from a high street shop might not actually be recyclable. Um, same with the little toothpaste tube. I bet if I have a look on this, this has probably got a number seven on it. I'll just open it up because I'm curious now. But yeah, I did have a Google a while back and you can find some really good infographics. So this one's actually number two. Don't know how well you can see that on the camera. So certain numbers are good, very easy to recycle. Certain numbers are, it's usually when they're mixed plastic. So it's to do with what they're made out of. So if you have one that's made out of several mixed plastics, it will have a certain number. So yeah, again, as I say, not an expert, but Google is the answer for that one. And, and you'll find a little chart that will tell you what's good and what's bad and to print it. Sorry, I totally misread your question there. <laughs> I think um, Debbie wanted to say something as well. Yeah, sorry, Debbie, I cut you off. Yeah. Um I'm, I've been concerned about the numbers and yeah. I'm also concerned about all the plethora of symbols and we, yeah. got, a new, we got a new one last, last week about um, circular re recycling. I do not see why we cannot use the industrial triangle with numbers in it on all products yeah. and I am in discussion with my MP about it. Brilliant. Um, I, would I would really love to sponsor a campaign where we drove this home yeah it would because they it don't would, make it easy no because it would it would it would save them ink it would save them space on the packaging so they could put more rubbish on on, on it about 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 their pro, about their yeah. products but um, it's a real bee in my bonnet no i totally agree with you and that's the thing like you i've been doing this journey for two years now since i really sort of started thinking about my plastic usage and even when you've asked me that question now alban I can't off the top of my head tell you which numbers are better and which numbers are worse because it's it's not an easy thing to remember. And again, when I'm trying to show you it on the products, it's tiny. It's hard to find. Most people aren't going to go into the shops and look for that tiny, tiny little number um, to decide whether to buy something or not. So, yeah, this is what I was saying right at the beginning. It does need to come from higher up. But like you say, the more we speak to things like our local MPs, speak to government, uh, change things through our consumer behavior through what we're asking for what we're wanting what we're buying that's when the change is really going to start to add up with more and more of us speaking out and also shopping differently but yeah I totally agree with you they make it really complicated and some of the companies don't even realize that their advertising does not match their company policy yeah yeah and a lot of it is misleading so you'll find that as well so you'll have a product that says all over it how eco-friendly it is or or vegan or something like that, just as examples. Yeah. But if you actually look into it, it's not actually that environmentally friendly. Um, you know, you still get some things that are in a plastic bottle, but all over the plastic bottle, it, it will spout about how 
great it is, but then you're like, okay, well, why haven't you used an aluminium bottle or something like that? So the things are getting quite, I think the term for it is greenwashed. It's mm. quite in vogue. It's very in fashion to be eco-friendly and environmentally friendly. And some brands and companies are jumping on it, but to take advantage of it instead of actually to make the change. Because mm. a lot of us now are just looking for that symbol of, oh, it's eco-friendly, oh, it's, it's green. And they'll buy it when actually, if you look into it a little bit deeper, this is where I was saying of that sort of ethical dilemma, you do need to decide if actually it's that great. For example, things like my Colgate alternative, because my husband doesn't like the tablets. Really, you know, are Colgate as a company, the most environmentally friendly, planet driven company out there? They might not be. So there is a lot to add up. But if you're right at the beginning of your journey, try not to get too caught up in that. Just do your research as and when you can. Don't let it overwhelm you um, and ask advice if you're not sure um, is the best thing I can say, really. Oh, I'm reading about what Bob's just said about the Horizon mobile app. So that is very interesting. And yeah, again, the thing is, if we all use it, that's going to become a bigger, better app. So, yeah, that's an interesting one to know. And again, um, I can't remember if I said at the beginning on this one, but you can save the chat. So I know we've had some brilliant ideas and links in the chat. And if you actually just click the three dots um, at the bottom right of the chat box, you'll see an option to save chat. I'm going to do it now, actually, um, before I forget. And it just it'll just save it. Um, oh, actually, no, I can't see how to do it. I don't, think it's, I don't think it's enabled, but oh, the, no, chat, Corey. the chat will be sent out. So do oh, request perfect. it. Do do email. Yeah, perfect. So yeah. There, there you go. You can get it that way then. Uh, and we can have a look. <laughs> Mike's going to go and scan everything in his cupboard with the Horizon app. But that's great. You know, it gets us thinking. We were talking this morning as well in my wildlife chat um, about palm oil. And I was saying like an interesting thing to do is to actually go around things like your kitchen cupboards and your fridge and have a look at the ingredients and actually see how many things you have in your house that have palm oil in that you just didn't realise um and didn't think of and then try and see if it's sustainable palm oil or not so it's a little bit like that horizon app it's it's finding out and realizing actually you know you don't think you're doing much damage to the planet but you actually might be so it's all about making small changes and and taking it from there did anybody have, have any other questions yeah becky can i ask you if um if there's any worth in us uh, actually pressurizing the uh, supermarkets to actually uh, stop purchasing things which are plastic covered when there's no need need for them especially yeah. you know food various food items is there anything that yeah. we can do together yeah to there do? really is i mean literally your local supermarket easiest thing to do is just write to them um and just make a point to say that actually you know we don't want this um so as well as obviously just your consumer behavior in general and avoiding buying those things that are wrapped in plastic. Another great thing to do can be to write them a letter. Uh, and if you're part of local um, communities, like things like Plastic Free Bedford, um, I'm in the Ampthill Climate Change Group, which is my local one, they'll do a lot of initiatives together so all the members can get on board and write that letter. Because the more letters that they have, the more feedback they have, the more likely they are. Um, when Hughes War on Plastic came out, I don't know when that was now, it must have been a couple of years ago now, but one of the initiatives they did was they just got people to take the plastic wrappers back into the shop uh, and to just say when they did it, we don't want this. This is your rubbish. Here it is back um, because then they've got to tackle it more. You know, if people are going into the shop and dropping back all their litter, they're kind of forced to do something about it. So, yeah, lots of things you can do. But the easiest thing is just when you're in there, don't buy the wrapped up veg, buy the loose veg. If you want to go one step further and write a letter, amazing if you want to go one step further than that and actually do it through a local group or get get together with interested friends and family to write letters as well um that's what's going to make the change isabel's just put a really good point um supermarket stock decisions are made on a national level not local yeah so yeah. We probably need to go national need to go bigger definitely and yeah, I'm sure a lot of you will all be in your local groups anyway, but um, it's a great thing to be in because, yeah, you can get involved in these sort of movements and, and yeah, take it national. Why not? That's what we, we need to do. We can all make our changes at home, like I said, and it will make a difference. Um, but 
yeah, the more more we do, the higher we take it, the the further we'll get because it does it does need to come from things like government, big supermarkets, corporate companies, things like that. So it's there's a long way to go. Um, and yet you can get that overwhelming feeling of it's sort of too little, too late, or I can't do enough. Uh, that's why I called my journey the eco emo, because I do, I call it eco anxiety. I get really sort of stressed about it and, and I feel a bit overwhelmed. So that's why I called it the eco emo, emo meaning emotional. Um, so yeah, you can make a difference and we've just got to all work together really, I would say, and, and spread the word. And by coming today, you've all helped. So thank you for joining. Brilliant. Thank you, Becky. Welcome. Thank you for having me. I hope you've all enjoyed it. I think I've answered everyone's questions. I can see people are talking about, yeah, making your own hummus and guacamole, James. That's great. And there's some talks this week, actually, um, talking about reducing food waste um, and using everything you have and making your own stuff. But yeah, you can do that. You can even make things like your own yogurt now and you're avoiding all those little plastic pots. And hummus is so easy to make. So is guacamole. So yeah, you don't need to go and buy those little pots that then have that little annoying plastic seal around them. So even if you recycle the pot, you've still got that little seal. So brilliant ideas. And, and thank you everybody for getting involved in the chat as well. I really um, appreciate it. If anybody does want to follow us on social media, then at the moment for my eco journey, I'm only on Instagram. Uh, it's the underscore eco underscore emo. E -M -O. Uh, and if you want to follow Teaching Talons, we're on all social media platforms. So if you just give it a Google or search it on uh, that platform, you should find us on there as well. Um, so I'll let Corey finish up, but I just wanted to say thank you so much for coming. Uh, and I hope to see you on some of the other talks this week by the other people as well. So thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so you can book onto any of the events for free this week. Um, we've still got quite a lot more to go. Tomorrow, we've got one on fast fashion and the climate. That's with the Artful Menders, and that is at 12 p.m. Um, we've got one on ethical and sustainable investing. Not all profits are created equally. That is at 2 p.m. And also at 7 p.m., we have one on sustainable farming in Bedfordshire. So do book on to those. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much, guys. See you later. Thank you, Corey. Thank you, Peggy. Many thanks.